Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we're going to begin the funeral services of Dr. Philip Wernickoff. Officiating this morning is Rabbi Sherry Chen from Congregation B'nai Shalom. This time I invite the family members to please rise and stand in place as the rabbi leads the family in the ceremony of Kriya. For hearts that are torn, we perform this act of Kriya. It is said that when Jacob was told that his beloved son, Joseph, had died, that he tore his garments, we remember as we perform this act of Kriya, of tearing. If you will repeat after me, Baruch Adonai. Eloheinu melech ha'olam, dayan ha'emet. We praise you. Repeat after me. 
we praise you. Lord our God, ruler of the universe, judge of truth. You be seated. Death has taken our beloved Phil. Our friends grieve in their darkened world, in their silence. There's lamentation. In their tears, there's loneliness. Lost in their sorrow, may they find the presence of loving family and friends. Hear them, O oh God, be with them. For Phil's love that united us in life in which death cannot sever. For his companionship, that we shared along life's path, and which continues through the tenderness of memory, for the gifts of his heart and mind that brought us joy and happiness, and now is a precious remembrance. For all these and more, we give our thanks, O oh God. In this time of grief, we listen to the voice of our sacred scriptures that bring us the ever new message of God's nearness tells us of our kinship with our creator in light as in darkness, in joy as in sorrow, in life as in death. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forevermore. Amen. I'd like to invite up three of Phil's granddaughters, Rachel, Jody, and Becky, to speak. Try love. A car lover and Sunday driver, my grandpa Phil wondered about what he could do with a phrase that was so present in his mind after his beloved passed. He thought maybe a vanity license plate would be a venue for giving this phrase life in some way. If you think about it, it's not a bad way to get a simple, succinct message out to folks. Even though he wasn't making cross-country road trips, people noticed him, especially when he jutted out into traffic, making right turns with increasingly less distance as he aged. <laughs> Fortunately for him, the phrase had not been used, and with the help of Uncle Shelley, as of 2015, his place read, Try Love. What it meant to him and why he felt moved to share that message is not totally known to us. However, we all knew he loved us, individually and collectively. In his 90th birthday celebration, he referred to his family as the most precious pearls ever harvested. That's saying something for a jeweler. Grandpa Phil had a quiet, regal way about him, except when he was telling dirty jokes and perhaps flirting with waitresses. He was always well-groomed, meticulously dressed, and to me, he was famous for his silver hair that rolled intentionally across his forehead, his high-waisted pants, his warm smile, and beautiful skin and his long pinky nails that open envelopes and tighten tiny screws on glasses. <laughs> While I don't remember him being especially playful physically, he was particularly present. I do recall him giving me a piggyback ride as a child and feeling terrible when something went wrong and his arm wound up in a cast. He certainly didn't want me to feel responsible for that. He was the kind of man that showed love in other ways. He showed his love in the way he brought his family together to share meals. He showed his love in the way he showed up for our special occasions. 
He showed his love in the way he walked with us through difficult time. He showed his love in the way he made the mundane special, like making instant oatmeal or cleaning my glasses. He liked to pontificate and provide guidance and support. He was a philosopher and a lover of life. He had a way of focusing on the good and the positive and what's possible. He shared many stories of his mother, Sophie, making the most delicious meals out of poor cuts and scraps from the butcher. He spoke so highly of his childhood growing up in relatively simple conditions. It is no surprise to me that losing his herring as a child to the mumps made him stronger and more successful in many regards. He often said, I'm deaf, but everything else works. He figured out ways to connect and communicate across languages and cultures, despite his physical handicap. That resilience and curiosity in people inspired me. I often think that his eyes made up for what he didn't hear. He was a people person and keen observer. He saw into people the strengths and flaws, and what he didn't hear likely helped him live longer. Sometimes I wish he didn't notice every booger or emerging pimple on my face. <laughs> the way we communicated and what we shared shifted when we lost Lovey's lips. We relied more on the boogie board and talked about other topics. It was a little like sharing secrets or a diary, safer in a sense. I think we each got to know Grandpa differently in these later years, which was an unexpected gift. When I scroll back, the memories that I have. <laughs> of Grandpa Phil. I think that we were similar in the sense that we were people of few words. But when we spoke with the intention, but we spoke with the intention to make everyone count. Although unlike me, he always was prepared to deliver a speech whether it was one off the cuff or a piece that he had tucked away in his coat jacket. I think that Grandpa Phil always wanted to make the world a better place. And he did through his own inherent ways. He was an, he was an optometrist that helped people see the world through a clear lens. He was a jeweler that brought joy into people's lives by helping people celebrate and mark the, the occasion with that perfect piece. His endless repertoire of jokes that brought countless smiles to our faces. But most of all, he was the patriarch of our family in which he instilled endless life lessons in all of us. Now I would be remiss if I didn't comment on his perfectionist ways and how meticulous he and Grammy were in every aspect of their lives. This was one of the focal points of the grandchildren's jokes. How every carpet, including their car mats, were perfectly vacuumed with the exact right pattern, and each trinket was precisely placed to perfection in their home. Last month, I found myself asking my staff to repaint our whole hallway and stairwells, which took them almost three full days. And when they finished, I first thanked them, and then I told them that I hope you don't think I'm crazy. I just like things to look nice. Every one of them said, ma'am, we know you asked, asked us to do this because you care and you want us to be proud of our team. I think that is exactly what Grandpa Phil emulated with his caliber of perfection. He was proud of everything in his life and he wanted everyone to see that, and we did. They also saw perfection in us, even when we didn't see it in ourselves. Grandpa always asked me when my next promotion was, and are you a general? And if Rachel is a boss yet. <laughs> When I was 17, my mom, Gigi, and Steve got married. At that time, I was suddenly rich in parents, but I was not close to my one remaining grandparent who was still alive. I felt that absence in my life. Yet, without he hesitation, Grandma Lovey and Grandpa Phil claimed the three of us as their own. They were already rich in grandchildren, but their hearts and their loves were that grand that they had space to love and embrace the three of us into the fold. 
I will always remember Grandpa, Grandpa Phil and his grandness. It was several years back that I believe it was either Rach or Steve who told me that Grandpa wanted the grandkids to refer to him as Grandpa. And he was grand. We all felt it when he walked into a room, especially the ladies, whom he always found ways to compliment. <laughs> and when he reached out to me, and I'm sure many of you over email, just to check in, he always had a joke to share. Several months ago, Grandpa reached out to me at the start of my school semester and asked how everything was. I was totally stressed out. I had just started teaching, and I let him know all of that. He wrote back, let me know if you need any help. <laughs> I will always remember Grandpa for his light spirit, for his lust for life, and his deep love for his family. And I feel blessed to have shared this time on this earth together with him because he was truly a special human who spread joy to so many people, and I am certain that that love will resonate for a long time in the generations to come. There are moments that I have been missing for a while now. The sound of his hands shuffling on a leather steering wheel as he makes a turn. The rubbing of his fingers as he dusted crumbs off his fingertips when eating breadsticks at Greek diners and strong sense of cologne. I don't think I'll ever smell a cigar and not think of grandpa. What I miss most are the family dinners and sharing my grandpa with friends. With each friend I brought to my grandpa's home, especially after Grammy Lovey passed, I learned new things about him. He shared different parts of himself with different people. It was like seeing another blossom in a familiar bouquet. It's been really special to see him connect with his great-grandchildren. In the past two years since the birth of my daughter, I got to see a tenderness that I hadn't noticed in the same way before. It was like he was trying love again, becoming more present and more forgiving of imperfections. It was almost as if this intention to try love freed him to love deeper and stronger. Grandpa Phil did more than try love. He became love. He lived up and into his name, Phil, a Greek verb for to love. May his memory be a blessing and may his love for us buoy us as we never stop trying love. That was beautiful. Thank you all for sharing that. In his sorrow, Job cried out, Adonai Natan, Adonai Lakah, Yehi Shem Adonai Barach. God has given, God has taken away. Blessed be the name of God. An ancient people, we are well acquainted with grief, with the valley of shadows of death and sorrow. They are not strangers to us, yet the centuries have taught us that a good name endures beyond the grave and that there is strength and faith. With Job, we say, Adonai, Natan, God, you have given. You gave us a loved one who will not be forgotten. For all that was good and enduring in his life, we offer the deepest thanks of our hearts. Adonai Lakach, God, you've taken away. We pray for the strength to turn our broken hearts into an altar of trust, before which we acknowledge your sovereignty. <coughs> in love, as we now say, Yehi Shem Adonai Mavarach. Blessed be the name of God, now and forever. For me, personally, when I hear someone talk about Dr. Phil, the image that comes to my mind is not that guy on TV. No, for me, when I hear the name Dr. Phil, I instantly picture our Dr. Phil, sitting in the show office at B'nai Shalom, schmoozing, 
with the rabbi's wife, Peggy, or one of our secretaries, Yvette, for many years, or Ava, often with Lovey at his side while waiting to meet Rabbi Goldhamer, who was, as always, running late. I remember him and how welcoming and kind both him and Lovey were to me, even though I was only the other rabbi to so many other people in our community. I remember his wonderful smile, his impeccable dress, and I must confess, whenever he was there, I'd find some reason to come to the front office just to have the chance to spend a little time with him. I hear the words Dr. Phil and I instantly see him sitting at services with his beautiful lovey right at his side. I see them sitting in their usual place in our sanctuary, right in front of the beautifully designed Torah stand which holds all the dressings for our Torah, which Phil and Lovey gave to B'nai Shalom on their 50th anniversary. Whenever I see their Torah stand, which I do whenever I'm in the temple, I feel their presence there. I can sense them with me, and I can see them smiling. Phil used to say that the Torah stand was symbolic not only of the love that him and Lovey had for one another, <clears throat> but also the love they had for their temple. For Phil really did love B'nai Shalom. I mean, why else would he have become a bar mitzvah boy when he was 68 years old? Rabbi Goldhammer <coughs> excuse me, remembers so fondly when Phil was studying for his bar mitzvah with him. You remember how hard he worked in Lovey's face on the day Phil had his bar mitzvah. She was so proud of him. Phil signed beautifully, read the Hebrew explicitly, and gave a brilliant Devar Torah. He was the love of her life, and she was the love of his. Phil used to say that Lovey was his ears, and he was her eyes. She interpreted regularly for him, communicating to him everything happening in the service, and he was her eyes, taking meticulous notice of everyone and everything especially all of us up there on the Bima. The two of them completed each other, and they had 68 glorious years together, which is amazing. He was 68 when he was bar mitzvahed, and they had 68 years. <coughs> Who would have thought them when their parents met in Moore's Mud Bath in Wisconsin that they would arrange such a beautiful and long-lasting shidduch? One parent said, we have a single son. The other parent said, we have a single daughter. And the two of them began to correspond, which soon became love letters. And finally, after six months, he invited her to a family wedding. She said yes, and that was it. They truly were soulmates together always. <clears throat> Phil and Lovey truly appreciated the good things in life, always perfectly clothed meticulously dressed, beautiful jewelry, wonderful cars. They loved good food. I'm told they went to all the best restaurants. <clears throat> and they were generous, often taking Rabbi Goldhammer and his wife, Petty, to many different fancy restaurants, including Café La Kev and Myron and Phil's, which Peggy was certain was named in his honor. <clears throat> They both fondly remember the first time Phil and Lovey took them to dinner. That was when Phil had his Rolls Royce. And it was the first time either one of them had ever ridden in such a fancy car. Rabbi Goldhammer was so nervous that he might sneeze or cough or get it dirty with his shoes, especially after he heard Phil tell the valet, be very careful. <clears throat> Yet when they both saw how uncomfortable he was, they went out of their way to make him feel at ease. They honored him as he honored them. Throughout the years, Phil always made Rabbi Goldhammer feel valued, whether by bringing him many, many different pairs of eyeglasses or by regularly corresponding with him through the emails he dictated to his sons in response to something Rabbi Goldhammer had written. 
He also remembers Phil generously donating jewelry to our fundraisers throughout the years. He admired Phil so much for the match that he was. He would say they would go out to dinner and people know Rabbi and they would come to the table. And Phil, instead of being upset, uh, he would say, come sit down, tell us how you know the rabbi. And he would invite everybody in. We knew how much he loved our synagogue, but we also knew that what he really loved more than anything else was his family. Phil and Lovey raised three wonderful children, Dale, Shelley, and Steve. He was proud of each and every one of you and often spoke of your individual accomplishments and how much he and Lovey cherished you all. He loved you, Gail, and gave a copy of your book to Rabbi and Peggy and Steve. Phil spoke of what a hard worker you are, and I have been told how thrilled both him and Lovey were when you married Gigi. They welcomed you as a daughter, not as a daughter-in-law. I have also been told how invaluable Shelley was in the family business, how Phil couldn't get along without him. And just this week, Steve shared with me about the wonderful care that you took of your father, Shelley, these past years. Now, even the doctors agreed that his life was prolonged because of your wonderful care and devotion to him, as well as by his four beloved trusted caregivers, Lenora, Lucille, Dorothy, and Grace. And Phil loved and was adored by his, all of his grandchildren, Aaron and Marianne, Rachel, Joshua, Megan, Lauren and Steve and Jody, Rebecca, Natalie and Matthew and Michael. And Phil was thrilled to be a great grandfather to Noah, Talia, Tyler, Kylie, Eleanor, Avi and Annie. They truly are the blessings in his life. Phil was also proud, but he never told us and I didn't know until this week that he was a Mason for over 50 years. And he cherished his friendship with his friend and lodge brother, Rick Rogers, who will do a short ceremony at the gravesite. <clears throat> On the day that Phil left this earth and passed from this life to life eternal, the Jewish people celebrated the holiday of Shavuot, the giving of the Ten Commandments. It is said that on that day, the people stood at Sinai. They saw the thunder. They heard the lightning. And it is said that every Jewish soul was there. And on Shavuot, the heavens open up. And that is the day, the time, that God is closest to the Jewish people. It is said that on that day, the angels take our prayers straight from our lips to God's ears. How fitting it is that that was the day that Phil's soul chose to leave the world and be reunited with his beloved lovey. <clears throat> I'm told that shortly before Phil passed, he told his family that they should be good and enjoy life while you can. I believe that's exactly what Phil did. He was a man who lived life to its fullest. He accomplished great things in his life eye doctor, he was a successful jeweler in business. He was married for 68 years to a woman he adored and who completed him. He raised a beautiful family who loved him as much as he loved them. He honored his community, his synagogue. And on the day that we celebrated God's greatest gift to the Jewish people, the giving of the Ten Commandments, he left this world allowing his soul to be bound up in the gift of eternal life for now and forever, as we say together, amen. In the rising of the sun and its going down, we will remember Phil in the blowing of the will and the chill of winter. We will remember him in the opening of buds and the rebirth of spring, we will remember him in the rustling of leaves and the beauty of autumn we will remember him in the beginning of the year and when it ends. We will remember him when we are weary and in need of strength. We will remember him when we're lost and sick at heart. We will remember him 
when we have joys we yearn to share. We will remember him. So long as we live, he too will live. For that part of him is with us now, and we will always remember him. Into your care, we entrust the spirit of Phil Warnikoff, for you keep faith with your children and debtors in life. Sustain us that we may meet with serenity the mysteries that lie ahead, knowing that when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you, God, are with us, a loving friend in whom we put our trust. You are the light of our lives, our hope in eternity. At all Jewish funerals, two prayers are said. The first, El Malay Rachamim, O God of compassion and spirit, we believe that this prayer brings the archangels, Michael, the angel of love, and angels, Michael, who could be compared to God in beautiful silver robe. On his left, Gabriel, the strength of God, in beautiful crimson robes. Before him, Oriel, God's light in robes of gold. Behind him, Raphael, in beautiful purple and green robes, the angel of healings, God's healing. We believe when we say Amalei, the angels come, they take his soul and bring it straight up to heaven. And when we say the mourner's cottage, that is the golden key that opens the doors. We rise for Amalei Rachamim. El Malay Rahamim, Shochem Beramim, Hamatse Melucha, Nehanoa Tahik, Nape Hashkina, Im Kidoshim, Utoharim, Kezohar Halakia, Masirim, Et Nishmat, Shraga, Bailot, Ben Benyamim, Shahalach, the Olamo, Baal Harahamim, Yastirehu, the Seta Kelafar, the Olamim, Amen. O God of compassion, this eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to Phil Warnikoff, who has entered eternity. O God of mercy, let him find refuge in your eternal presence. Let him be comforted in the shadow of your wings and let his soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is his inheritance. May he rest in peace and let us say together, Amen. In the mourner's Kaddish, if you find any programs. Yikadal v'yikadash shemir rabba v'amad ivrak yutei v'amlik magutei v'chayechon v'yom echon v'chayei dekol beit Yisrael Ba'agala of his man karivimu. Amen. Yehe shme rabba mavarach, the lomel mail maya, yid barafish tabafi pavi umam vi nasa, vitadar vitale vitalal shemidikurisha, brichu, the alum in koberhata of shirata, tushberhata of nechamata, damiram ba ma vimu. Amen. Yehe shlama rabba michamaya, the haima lino val kolis kael, vimu. Amen. Ose shalom bim ramav, hu yaase shalom. Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael ve'imru amen. May God grant peace to those who mourn and comfort to all of you, our bereaved among us. And we say amen. David, you may be seated. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there'll be a private family interment service at West Lawn Cemetery. For those of you who will be driving in the procession, the procession will be forming in our parking lot. Please obtain an orange safety funeral sticker to place on the right-hand side of your windshield. Have your bright lights and hazard lights on at all times. For additional measures of safety, we will be providing a car in the back of the procession to hopefully keep other cars from entering the procession. Please use your horn liberally as you're going through the intersections. Please do not speak or text on your cellular phone while driving to a cemetery. 
Memorial contributions in his memory can be made to your favorite charity. We want to uh, say thank you for all, the, all of you who have joined us online. The family appreciates that as well. This time we'd like to call upon uh, Dr. Wernickoff's grandchildren to serve as pallbearers and just come forward as I ask everyone to rise as we escort his casket from the chapel. 